I first began entrepreneurship back in 2018 and I knew absolutely nothing. I was just a little girl with a big dream. So I went for it with a friend of mine. We started small, but we bought products, supplies, and we even hired people, okay? We had this great idea. We found a, an apartment building that would let us render our service. But we really struggled to get clients, okay? It was so tough. And if you ask a lot of business owners, they will tell you that their number one struggle, besides the capital that they needed to start the business, is actually getting recurring clients. So, you know, we really battled with that and we ended up closing that business down. But let's say you want to start a business that doesn't even cost you much to start, right? You are ready to get going, like some of the businesses that I mentioned in last week's video of business ideas that you can start without any money. So let's say you're starting that kind of business where capital isn't really your main issue. Or you're one of those people who knows you're going to start a business and you know how much money you need so you're currently saving up your salary or whatever money you can because you think once you have that money you can finally start your business now you know it would be quite a big mistake to just do that to just wait months maybe years saving up this money and then you go in and you start a business you buy everything that you need you know some people go as far as renting a store location that kind of thing and they buy everything and then they open their doors maybe on the launch some family and friends support Months, weeks later, it's dry. There are no customers, there are no clients. So let me tell you the truth. It's very hard for people to trust a brand new business. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what you should do instead. So how this video is going to go, I'm first going to give you the reason for the strategy. Then I'm going to give you actionable steps that you can take. Then I'm going to give you an actual example of how I would start, let's say, a hair company using this strategy. So I think that the cheapest way to start your business in 2021 is to first build an online audience for your product or your service. Because like I said, the number one thing that new business owners struggle with is getting those clients and customers. So if you were to build an audience online first, then when you launch, you have your people and you won't struggle, okay? The other pro of building an audience first is that you get to do free market research, ask questions, get information from your target audience about what products and services they actually want from you. Because one thing that I learned when I was starting different businesses is that yes, you can do as much market research as possible and different industries, but things are always going to differ in your location with your exact business model. And so yes, you can get generic market research, but the best is when you have your own audience to actually pull your answer from. And while we're here, comment down below and tell me if you're thinking of starting a product business or a service business so that in future I can cater my videos based on what you are actually starting this year. Now let's get into the actionable steps of how you build an online audience first so that you can have a cheap way of starting your business. The first thing you want to do is competitor research, okay? You want to go on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, everywhere that you can find and find people who are doing what you want to do, okay? This is going to give a proof of concept because you'll be able to see what other people are doing. Are people buying from them? Are they clients? What's happening? You're also going to be able to see how they structure their page. If you want to start something and you are unable to find anybody doing it, that may be a bad thing, you know. It's not always a good idea to reinvent the wheel unless you know exactly how you're going to do it and your business model is perfect. But for most beginner entrepreneurs, I think it's better to go off with a tried and tested business model for your very first business. So you want to make sure that the idea that you have does exist. Other people are doing some sort of variation. Of course, you're going to be unique in the way that you offer your product or service, but you want to make sure that there is an existing market first. The next thing you want to do is continue your market research, but inside Facebook groups. You can actually use the search bar in the Facebook groups to search for common keywords that people are discussing and it can show you old posts of what people have said about that thing. So what you want to make sure is you gather common questions that people are asking, frequently asked questions, pain points, problems that they have, recommendations that they are for you want to see what people are actually talking about around this topic and subject of the business that you want to start and then you can also be an active member of this Facebook group by commenting on other people's posts engaging with them so that later on one day when you finally do have your business you can actually promote to these people because they will already have known you from joining the group but before that you can actually after you've been in the group for a while you can actually ask your own market research questions you can ask questions about hey guys how much would you be willing to pay for this or you know where are you currently doing your nails let's say you're starting a nail business where do you currently do your nails how did you go about choosing your nails like just to get information about your prospective clients this will be really really helpful if you apply it correctly there is so much value to be gained on Facebook groups I would completely slipped on this and I really wish I had implemented the strategy when I was first starting then what you're going to do is create content for your ideal client so at this point in time you may not exactly know what service you want to do or what 
product you want to sell or whatever you don't have to know exactly what it is that you want to do but what you do have to know is your ideal audience the kind of people you want to serve whoever you think would be a good fit for your products and services even if you're not a hundred percent sure of what you want to sell just yet because you are going to still continue this market research in order to make sure you're selling the right product to the right people so I would say first find a group of people who would be a good fit for your service and then create a product for them so in this content that you create and this is something that you can do even if you're working a full-time job you know you don't have to actually stress yourself out with this content creation just keep it very simple so there's different types of ways that you could create content but the goal of this thing is to become a resource of information you want to become a source of information that people will trust you right so one a great way to start is to one you can answer frequently asked questions in your industry a lot of the time people want to know how much things cost what the service is like let's say a Brazilian wax right people might not know all the details and business owners that offer Brazilian waxes may not always have the information that prospective people are looking for so things like is it really painful how long does it take you could start to create content around you know this Brazilian wax service how much it typically costs in the industry and everything that a person who's looking for that service would need at this point in time you're not selling the service you're just providing information that your prospective clients would be interested in the next thing that you could do is then you could do reviews of different companies you know don't be nasty because I mean these are going to be your competitors but try to keep your review fair and just list pros and cons and what you're doing here is you're providing valuable information that people would really enjoy this is a great way to create content by collecting information on your page or on your YouTube channel I actually think YouTube is easier to start uh, I know a lot of you don't think that but I actually think YouTube is easier to start and the reason for that is because it's a little bit harder so not a lot of people do it right whereas anybody can start an Instagram page start posting pictures and that's so there's a lot of competition on Instagram and in order to be relevant on Instagram you need to be posting like every single day multiple times a day it's quite a hard platform whereas with YouTube you know it's something that is so much easier if you are interested in more information about starting a YouTube channel then download my free ebook where I give you four secrets to YouTube excellence and that could also help you in this content creation but let's get back to the video the goal of you creating this content is to become a source of information that people trust okay another thing that you could do in your content creation strategy if you're not shy is you could be the face of the content you could you know make these YouTube videos that people begin to trust you because if you just write a blog right and it's just information that people visit they're not really going to get a personal connection with a random blog but they could get a personal connection with you as an individual and in my experience I found that video is the quickest and best way to build trust with your audience so I highly recommend that but if video is not really your thing you can go ahead and go on Instagram you know I have some videos about how to stand out on Instagram you can also start a blog and there's lots of resources about that but the point is that become a source of information so that people trust you the fourth thing you want to do is now you started to build an audience you start to have people following your account you have maybe a couple hundred followers you don't need thousands just like two three hundred people following you or subscribing to your channel and you can start to ask them questions you know you can now now you have your ideal audience it's not a hypothetical market it's now your people and you can start to ask them hey if you were to buy this service how much would you be willing to pay for it and you can start to get market research from your new audience that you have created and if you've been giving them valuable information this whole time they will be more than willing to just give you some information on their preferences but make sure you stick around because I'm going to give you an actual example of how I would apply all of this to a real business the fifth thing you want to do once you've spoken to your audience is now have a pre-launch strategy start to tease your offer and start to tease the thing of oh I'm thinking you know you can tell them I'm thinking of starting this I'm thinking of launching this what do you guys think start to build that anticipation for your product you know don't just wake up one day and launch something you know you want to make sure you build anticipation for this thing and this will really really help you I know a lot of people who just launch something out of the blue and they're surprised when nobody shows up so you want to make sure you're alerting your audience beforehand that something's coming something's in the work so that you build that excitement for your product then you're going to have a lean startup launch this is based on experimenting and collecting feedback in order to iterate and improve your product why I love this it's better than building an entire business model spending hundreds of thousands of rands launching something that people don't actually want so you're going to start really small test the market with people that are actually willing to buy because a lot of people when you tell them you have a business idea they'll be like yeah sure I'll buy I'll purchase and then you have something for sale and then nobody's actually buying so the best way to find out if people are actually going to support and buy from you is when you have something that you're selling but don't spend all your money so start off really small sell something see how it goes take feedback from them 
and then change and iterate your product as necessary. Then the final step that you need to take is to collect testimonials. People buy from people that they trust and they need to know that other people have bought from you too. So it's very important to make sure you collect customer feedback and testimonials and post them regularly on your page so that people who follow you see that, oh, other people are buying. This is a real legitimate business. I trust this person's information that they've been giving me for months. I should probably support them too. This is a step that a lot of businesses don't include is providing customer feedback and testimonials. So you want to make sure you include customer testimonials in your content that you create. And when you're running this business, keep continuing to provide content for your business, educate them, still be this trustworthy source, but now you'll also be selling something and a portion of your audience will actually buy because they've trusted you. And the things that you need to understand that people buy from businesses that they trust. So if you build a business all on your own, in your, in your room, and you build this entire business and you, you launch it, who's actually going to buy? Nobody trusts you, you know? So if you do the strategy, it will really, really help you to gain your customer's trust. So this is why I, re I really, really recommend the strategy, but let me give you an example of how I would apply this. For example, if I was launching a hair company, I wanted to sell wigs and weaves, which I'm, I might still, I love wigs, and so I might totally do this business one day. But anyway, this is what I would do. The first step was the competitor research. So I would go on Instagram and I would search different hair companies to see what they're posting. I would see what kind of pictures they post, how frequently they post. I would also look at which of their posts get the most likes, which of their posts get the most comments. Okay, I would also check out Facebook. I would check out on YouTube if there are any hair companies that have YouTube channels and I would see what they post. I would also see how big their audiences are, which are some of the best companies, which are some of the worst companies. So this is in my first step of the market research. Now, I already know there's a demand for hair, but it's still important to, to see what size, how big the demand is, where the companies are based. Are they in Durban, Joburg? What happening right then the next step I had said go to Facebook groups to see what people are saying on this topic but I think for a hair company I would stick to Instagram and I would look at the comments that the people leave in the comment section what are the common questions that they ask are they asking about prices are they complaining about the prices are they asking about how is this hair delivered what's the delivery service I would see what people are actually saying in the comment section of these businesses and then I would also find some Facebook groups and in the Facebook groups I would look through the posts and I would see what the common complaints are what the common questions are you know what are the hot hair trends that kind of thing just to gauge what my market is doing and the next thing I would do is I would start to create content about the hair industry now at this point in time I'm not selling anything I'm just educating my consumers about hair now I actually happen to know a lot about hair about the hair industry how the hair is made where it comes from all of that information and I would educate my clients I would also let them know of things that are happening in the industry like for instance at the current moment there's a shortage of lace because of North Korea and COVID and all of that and so you know I would inform people about what's happening uh, and I'd become a trusted resource because I'm letting people know how it goes down how the hair is made you know what goes into it the whole process and people would find this information really interesting and it would be great because I'm not selling hair I'm just educating them on this industry I would tell them what's the difference between Brazilian hair Indian hair you know all the different types of things and I would become that resource for people I would then review the top popular companies if I have hair from them or I would just read other people's reviews you know I would just go online and find comments and I could make that into a video of this is what people are saying these are the pros of this hair company these are the cons of this hair company but I would make sure I always keep my reviews fair and I'm not trying to bash my future competitors I'm just giving my target audience the information that they would need right and in this way I'm becoming a trusted source of reliable information about hair then when I have two to three hundred followers either on my YouTube channel which I recommend or on Instagram which is also fine I would then start to do polls on Instagram story to ask my audience certain questions of like how much would you spend on hair and do you prefer a bob wig or a long wig you know what are your preferences now that is me trying to gauge this audience that I have what is it that they actually want what is it that they like and then those people who reply to the poll not everybody who follows you is going to reply to your poll but a few people will answer your questions and then I would use that opportunity to DM them and ask them more questions of okay why this price range or why do you prefer a bob over a long wig for instance so that I could get more deeper information about what they like. I would then ask them questions of how did you go about buying hair in the past? How did you choose? What were you happy with? What were you not happy with? I would then ask a few of them some of these deeper questions so that I could get a better understanding of my target client. Now it's time for my pre-launch strategy. Remember all this time I've been giving them content, information, teaching them about hair, doing reviews, all of this kind of stuff but now it's time for me to sell my product. So what I would first do 
Like I said, you don't launch out of the blue. You start to tease that there's something coming. And then I would begin to share some of the milestones that I achieved. For instance, up until this point, I wouldn't have chosen a business name or a logo. But at this point, now that I'm actually going to do this, maybe when I've created my logo, I would tell them, hey, I've just created my business logo. Here are my colors. Here's my name. And I would just share with them so that they're part of the behind the scenes process. People love behind the scenes and they'll really root for you when you're telling them that you're about to do something. And it really helps with your launch if you do this. But make sure you only share things that are a done deal because you don't want to announce that you know you're launching in October and then something happens and maybe you launch in November now you're going to not look reliable so only share information that's a done deal that you know is not going to change because you don't want to be one of those business owners that's constantly flip-flopping and changing everything that does not look reliable but be comfortable to share milestones that you know that this is a done deal and it's not going to change now I have my audience I've done my pre-launch strategy I am ready to start then I would use the lean startup method of launching a business and I would buy a very small amount of hey maybe only five Five units right maybe I buy five units of the exact same thing let's say in the poll a lot of people told me that they prefer bobs over long weeks so now I'm going to buy five bobs and this is going to be my first sale and maybe people said they want the bob to be affordable so I'd keep it at like 800 I would sell five bobs for 800 rand for instance if that is the price range that they voted that they would be comfortable with purchasing then I launch right I have a launch I tell them this is for sale I do the whole thing and hopefully these five wigs will go within a month that people will actually buy now if it's one of those cases where people told you they would buy something and it's now you're selling it and they're not buying it then you know well okay something is wrong and you try to figure out is it the price is it the style you chose what's going on and this is where the lean startup methodology comes in because you're meant to take the feedback and change your product or change whatever it is that you're not doing right but if there are people that bought and they're happy with your service then I would make sure to collect their testimonials if they bought from me I would ask them hey what did you think about this I may even give them an incentive say I will give you a voucher or a discount on your next order if you were to send me a video testimonial you know because I think video testimonials are so much more legit than like a typed up testimonial but even if you only have a text testimonial that's also fine but make sure you collect client feedback from these first five people who purchase from you I'm then going to share these testimonials everywhere I'll even share them frequently you know don't be afraid of sharing the same testimonial a few times because then people are going to know that your service is real you're not a scammer you're selling something real people are buying and people love to buy when they know that other people have bought so I would definitely make sure I collect customer testimonials and I share them as well but even with my customers that I have bought I would ask them what did you enjoy what did you like how was the delivery was everything okay how was the hair quality if there are any problems I would make sure to fix them in my next batch of orders but if everything was perfect then I would go ahead and order an even large order so maybe now I would order 20 units instead of five and then I repeat the process so you get the basic picture you launch a small amount collect feedback change and improve what needs to be improved and you keep going that way doing it in small tranches instead of you going and ordering a hundred units of hair only to find out that the quality is bad and now you're stuck with all the stock you really don't want that right and so and it's better when you have small products because they keep selling out and you can tell people hey hurry order quickly because last time these five wigs all sold within two weeks so make sure to order so that you grab your hair and people like that they like limited edition type of stuff so that's also a great strategy to use but the key to all of this is that you will actually have an audience to sell your stuff to you will not be one of those business owners that spends all their money on equipment and products and then they have no customers you will have more than enough customers to actually purchase from you which is such a great luxury in business and then if you can try to be a real person people are so much more likely to support the business owner right you want to see the business owner win think of some of the influencers that launched products last year people were really really supportive because they support the influencer not necessarily that the product is special there are a lot of great products out there on the market but I've seen that people really really love to support business owners so if you're able to be a source of information you're kind and polite you have great customer service and your product is actually good or your service is really good people are so much more likely to support you to talk about you to share your work on their stories and you know your business will really boom and grow so if you can try to be the face of your business I know some of you are a little bit shy but I think this would really really help because Think about yourself. Are you likely to buy a product because someone wrote a blog article about it? Or are you likely to buy from someone you actually trust and someone that other people recommend? Also, you know that it's easy to scam people if you hide behind a logo or you hide behind a company and a lot of people scam that way. But when you come forward, you know, with your face and your name and everything, people know that you're a legitimate person and you're, le you're more legitimate. I know that some people can still scam, but you get the point that I'm trying to make, right? That people connect with people. 
So try to use that in your strategy as well. If you're not sure yet what kind of business to start, I have lots of videos about business ideas, so you can check out that playlist that I've created. Also leave me a comment and tell me if you're more interested in starting a product business or a service business. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. And like I said, if you're looking for business ideas because you're actually not sure what to start at all, then you can check out that playlist as well. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.